Hi everyone. Welcome to my first ever open source Saturday. In today's video, we are going to build a SQL Server City database, thanks to a site called simplemaps.com. As you can see, I already have a city database, and I am going to delete my copy now. I am going to delete my project I created to import the city data last time. I will also delete my copy of the Excel workbook city data. I am now going to download the free version of the Excel spreadsheet. This message here just states you agreed to link back to their site where you got the data. I will now extract the contents of the zip file. Double click on the Excel file to open it. I will rename Sheet 1 to City Data. First, I will delete City Iski. I am now going to rename a few columns and delete a few columns we don't need. I will now rename Column 1, City, to Name. Rename Column 2 to State Code. Column 3 becomes state name. Delete column 4, county something. Now I will rename the new column 4, county. Column 5 is lat. Column 6 is long, but it is spelled L, N, G. Column 7 is population. Column 8 is density. I am just making the first letter of each column a capital letter, so the column header makes a better variable name. I will now delete the source column. Delete the military and incorporated columns. I changed my mind. I will keep the incorporated column. I will keep the time zone and the zips column and I will delete the very last column, Ranking. This concludes our list of column adjustments. I will now save this spreadsheet. We are going to use my site Blazor Accelerate to code Generate AC Sharp class to simplify loading the Excel sheet. The first thing I need to do is type in my namespace, so I will type citydata.objects. I will now browse the My Excel sheet we downloaded. The name of the spreadsheet is uscities.xlsx. Now that the spreadsheet is uploaded, I will select the only sheet, City Data. I will now click the Generate Classes button. Before I download this zip file, I need to create a project. I will open Visual Studio 2022 and click Create New Project. For the project type, I will select Windows Forms. I will give this project a name, City Database. The project framework is .NET 8. I made a mistake when I recorded this video. I accidentally created the project in the wrong folder. I cut out the part where I moved the folder to the correct location to make this video a little faster. I made another mistake. The namespace is supposed to be citydatabase.objects. Now we need to add a new Git package to our solution. Right click at the top of Solution Explorer. Manage new Git packages for solution. Switch to the Browse tab. Type in datajuggler.accelerate. Click Install. Click the I Accept button. I will now build the project to make sure our project compiles. Now we are ready to save our city database to SQL Server. In SQL Server Management Studio, right-click the database's node 
and select New Database. Give the database a name, City Database. Now we are going to create a table. Right-click on the Tables node and select New Table. The first column is Named ID. The data type is Integer. This is going to be the primary key, so it can't be Null. I will now right-click the ID column and select Set Primary Key. I will now scroll down till I find Identity Specification. Expand Identity Specification and change its value to Yes. The next column is Name. The data type is in var care 50. None of the fields will be set to allow nulls. The next column is state code. The data type is in var care 5. The next field is state name. The data type is in var care 50. The next field is county. The data type is also in var care 50. The next field is lat. The data type is decimal and the precision is 12,6. The next field is long, but it is spelled L N G. The data type is decimal and the precision is also 12,6. The next field is population. The data type is integer. The next field is density. The data type is float. The next field is time zone. The data type is in var care 50. And the last field is zip. The data type is in var care max. I will now save the table. I will give it a name. City Data. We are now ready to build our data tier using datatier.net. I made a video last week about how to install datatier.net. It only takes five minutes to install. I will link to that video in the video description. I am mad I didn't use my text-to-speech app, Simon, that you are listening to now. My videos sound so much better than my own voice. Now we are going to create a datatier.net project. Click the New button, and the new project wizard will open. The first step is to give your project a name. I will enter City Data. I will open the folder for the WinForms project we created earlier. I need to create a folder named Data, so I will right-click, New, Folder. I will name the folder Data and copy the path. I will now paste in the path in the project folder in datatier.net. I am now going to create the data tier. As you can see, I am using the new version 2 templates, which only has two projects in the data tier. I will now click the Create Data Tier in Project Folder button. I am almost glad this happened. Sometimes the Create Data Tier fails on the first attempt. If you click the button again, it tends to work on the second or third attempt. See, it works the second time. Now we are going to add a database to our project. Click the Add button. Now I will type in my server name. I am using Windows Authentication. If you click the Ellipses button for Database, this will refresh the list. I will select the Database City Database. And now I will click Save. And I will click Save again. Before we build, I'm going to click on Manage Data. If this was a large project, 
and you have any tables or fields you want to exclude, uncheck them before you build. I will now click the Build button. This only takes a couple of seconds on a small project. Now I am going to include the code generated files in our solution. Click the ellipses button for solution file. Browse to your project folder and select the data tier .NET 8 class library .sln. This will only take a second on a small project like this one. The data access component and object library projects are now filled in. Click the Update Projects button. This will be very fast on a small project. Now we will execute the stored procedures that were generated. Click the stored procedures.sql. This will open SQL Server Management Studio. Now I will click Execute to run the query. Now our data tier is ready. I am now going to open Project. Properties. And I will change the nullable property and set its value to Disable. And now everything compiles. I am now going to exclude the data folder from the project. I will now create a solution folder. Right click the top of the solution and select Add New Solution Folder. Right click the solution folder and select Add Existing Project. Browse for your project folder. Open the Data Access Component folder. Double click on the Data Access Component project. Now right click the solution folder again. Select Add Existing Project. This time, add the Object Library project. I will now add two project references. If you install the release version of datatier.net, Connection Builder is also installed. Now we need to create a connection string and an environment variable to store it. I will now type in my server name. The database name is City Database. I'm using Windows Authentication. I will click the Build Connection String button. And now I will click Test and Copy. Now in Windows Search, type and edit the system environment variables. Click the Environment Variables button. In the top section, click the New button. Give your variable a name, City Data Connection String, but Connection is abbreviated. In the Value Text box, paste in your Connection String. Before we close this dialog box, we need to copy the name of the connection string. Select the name City Data Connection String and hit Ctrl C to copy. Now hit OK twice to close the Environment Variables Editor. Now let's go back to our Windows Forms project. In Solution Explorer, expand the Data Access Component project. Open the Connection folder and double click on connectionc to open. Expand the private variables region. Paste in your connection name where it says, change to your system environment variable name. Now whenever you create an instance of the gateway, you just pass in your connection name and your connection string is all wired up. I will show you an example of using the gateway in just a few minutes. Now we need a button. So I am going to add a NuGet package to the solution. In Solution Explorer, right-click the top node and select Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. Click on the Browse tab. Type in datajuggler.win.controls. Install datajuggler.win.controls into our Windows Forms project. While we are here, I am going to update two other packages. Click on the Update tab. Check the box for Select All. Click Update. I am now going to open the designer for our form. 
double click on main form.c sharp to open. Open the toolbox and expand the data juggler.win.controls section. Drag a label text box browser control onto the form. Just as the name implies, this control consists of a label, a text box, and a file or directory chooser. The first thing I will do to set up this control is change the theme to anything else and back to dark. This will change the label color. I need to set up our form. Select main form and change the back color to black. I am going to change the label text property to Excel. I will set the text property to blank. Select main form again and change auto scale mode to none. I will now change the font for the form. Click on font and select Verdana 12. I am now going to drag a button onto the form. I will now change the theme of the button to dark. Change the button text to import. Change the name of the button to Import Button. Now I will add a click of it. With the button selected, double click on the click property and Visual Studio will add the Import Button underscore clicked of it. This is optional, but I am now going to use a Visual Studio package of mine called Regionizer 2022. I will add a link to the video description for Regionizer if anyone is interested. In Regionizer, Click Format Document. This will format the selected C Sharp document into regions for constructors, private variables, events, methods, and properties. For the class description, I will type in this is the main form for this app. Expand the constructors region. In the constructor, I will place my cursor over the method initialize component. In Regionizer, I will turn on the auto commenting feature and hit Ctrl plus Shift at the same time. This will type the comment, initialize controls. We are now ready to import the Excel file we downloaded earlier. First, we need to add some using statements. Type using datajuggler.accelerate. Next reference is object library.businessobjects. Data access component.connection. And data access component data gateway. We are now ready to load our Excel Cities database, but first we need to create a progress bar. In Visual Studio Toolbox, expand common controls. Drag a progress bar onto the form. Expand the size of the progress bar along the bottom of the form. I will rename the progress bar graph, and I will change visible to false. I will now add a label. I will rename the label status label. I will change auto size to false and I will drag the height to make it a little taller and the width of the control to match the width of the progress bar. Change the four color to lemon chiffon. Change the text to blank. Now we need to rename the label text box browser control. Name this control Excel browser. We are now ready to load our Excel. First, I need the path to the Excel worksheet. String path equals Excel browser dot text. Now create a variable of type worksheet and name it worksheet equals Excel data loader dot load worksheet. Now we need to create a worksheet info object. Create a variable of type worksheet info and name it info equals new worksheet info. Now we need to set some properties on the info object. Info.path equals path. Info.columns to load equals 10. Info.load column options equals load column options enum dot load all columns except excluded. And finally, info.sheet name equals city data. Now we need to pass in the worksheet info object to load the worksheet. Now I will add a comment, load the worksheet. This is where the accelerate magic comes in. 
we just loaded an entire worksheet with one line of code. Now we are going to load a list of C-sharp objects with one line of code. Because I have two classes with the same name, city data, I must use the full namespace and class name when I refer to them. List city database dot objects dot city data cities equals city database dot objects dot city data dot load. And I pass in the worksheet as a parameter. This loads our entire list of city data objects. Now I will add a comment. Load the cities. Please tell me in the comments if you agree that Accelerate is magical. I now need to add another reference. Using data juggler dot ultimate helper. Now I can write the following. If statement. If list helper dot has one or more items. This tests if the list exists and has at least one item. I will now place my cursor on the line above the if statement and type control plus shift to type this auto comment. And I pass in the list of cities as a parameter. Now I will create a for each loop to save each city. I have to refer to the city data object by the full namespace plus class name because I named my table and my worksheet the same. This was my mistake. For each city database dot objects dot city data, city in cities. Now I will add a comment. Iterate the cities. If you remember about 15 minutes ago, I told you I would show you how to create an instance of the gateway in a few minutes. We are now going to create an instance of the gateway. Type gateway, gateway equals new gateway. For the connection name parameter, type connection dot name. I will now type control plus shift to apply an auto comment. I am going to rename the city in our for each loop to Excel city so I can tell the difference. Now I will create a city data instance and call it city. This city data instance is the object library dot business objects dot city. This is the city that will be saved to SQL Server. Now I will set each property. City.city name equals Excel city dot name. City.state code equals Excel city dot state code. City.state name equals Excel city dot state name. City.county equals Excel city dot county. City.lat equals Excel city dot lat. City.long equals Excel city.long. City.population equals Excel city.population. City.density equals Excel city.density. City.timezone equals Excel city.timezone. City.zip equals Excel city.zips. We are now ready to save this city. Type bool saved equals gateway dot save city data ref city. Now type if saved. Now I will type control plus shift to type an auto comment. Graph dot value plus plus. Now I will type control plus shift to type an auto comment. Next line, if graph.value modulus 100 equals zero, type refresh and application.do events. This will force the UI to update during a long running loop. We now need to set up the graph. First, I will set the status label.text to updating cities. Graph.visible equals true. Graph.maximum equals cities.count. Graph.value equals zero. In 25 minutes, we downloaded an Excel city database, created a data tier, 
and imported the cities into SQL Server. Before we run the program, we need to change the startup position for this form. Select Main Form and change the startup position to Center Screen. Now we need to browse for the Excel file. And it's finally time to click the Import button. As you can see, it is running very fast. I just realized I forgot to put a finished message for once the import is completed. We are now going to open SQL Server Management Studio and take a look at the data imported. The first query I'm going to run is select count star from city data. We imported 30,844 cities in just a few seconds. The next query I'm going to run is select star from city data. It appears the data is sorted by population. Thank you for watching this video. Please let me know what you think of Accelerate and datatier.net.